Nathan Smith is here at the Peabody Public Library on uh, March the 23rd, 2010 for the Willow County Oral History Program and uh, I am John Pontius. So we appreciate your being here with us today. Hi, you being here. So uh, when uh, you were first born, uh, where did you live? Uh, my, my folks lived at Colomer and a little, they rented a little house beside my grandparents' store there. Okay, uh, and who were your uh, parents? Uh, Danny and Callie Smith. And where were they from? Uh, uh, Dad was actually from, a, he was born in North Manchester, but grew up in Colliner. Okay. Moved, moved to the store when he was eight years old, and my mom, Callie, her, her maiden name was Stevens, was from Silver Lake, but originally from Prestonburg, Kentucky. Okay, and uh, what did, uh, where did you go to school? Was there a school there at that time? Oh yeah, they had schools. It was 1961, so. Uh, in Colmer? Yeah, yeah, I know. I would, um, we'd lived in Colmer for several years after that, but when I was three, then we moved to Tunker, Indiana. Okay, you know, okay. Went to school at, uh, in first grade uh, at Washington Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you were growing up, uh, uh, what kind of things did the family do around Colomer. Uh, was the was Eel River a, um, a, a part of your life? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. My earliest remembrances is playing in the park there. Okay, there was a park there. Yeah, they had a park. It was called Baker's Park. And where was, the, where is it? Is it still there? Uh, it is, no, it is now in the private hands. Uh, 1973, okay. the county commissioner sold it and Tom Dillon is the president owner. Okay, and uh, where uh, was the park? It is, it is right, uh, as you go into Colmer, if you turn left on to uh, 900 West towards the river, okay. just before you get to the river on the left-hand side. Okay. Now, was uh, the, the, uh, since you've lived there, has the bridge or the dam changed uh, any, uh, pretty much the same? It's changed a lot. Um, the bridge? The bridge, the bridge has been changed twice. I think actually only once since mm -hmm. I was born. But it's actually been changed a total of five times if I have my history right. And what what kind of changes uh, would that be? Well, the original bridge, of course, was a, a huge wooden bridge with just big metal, yes. rainbow type of iron iron railing. And then the second okay. second one was also when I was a child. It was still it was still the floor was still wooden, and then it had metal mm -hmm. sides. And of course now it's all metal and asphalt. Mm-hmm. And so, um, what, where did you, uh, your family buy uh, groceries? Was there a general store at the, uh, when you were there? Well, my grandparents owned the store. And so you, so you, your family and the people around the Calmer could buy things oh, yeah. there all the time? Yeah, my grandparents, Charlie and Ida Smith, owned the store, and then also uh, a guy named Stoner owned the store there, so there were two stores, actually. Okay, uh, how long did that, was that there then? Uh -huh. um, the store was originally built in, um, was a one-story building in 1860, and then in 1866, a guy named uh, uh, John Willits and uh, Ed Harder built the, the two-story that my grandparents owned. So it was built in 1866. And when it's no longer there? It is there. Is it, uh, uh, is it operating as a store? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, um, uh, they, Grandma shut the door in 1966. Okay. Um, so where did people uh, buy clothes and, uh, say, when you were growing up, uh, and uh, other things? Uh, did you go to Manchester uh, much? No, actually, um, yeah, shortly when I, I say we lived in Tonker when I was in first grade. Okay, and then so we they were gone. To, well, and then we moved to um, a place on McConnell Road, which is in Thorn Creek Township. Okay, North. Creek, which Georgia. is north of Columbia City. Yeah, my, yes. my father was the first family member in three generations to move his family north. It was only 19 miles north, but it was north, so okay. the first one to move out of Colmer, so to speak. So. Okay, uh, so you, where was this house uh, that you uh, first lived in in Colmer? Exactly where was that? Um, it was directly, um, it would be south of the store. So, and, and the store is on uh, 900, the corner of 914. So it is on 14. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, is it still there, that house uh, where you uh, grew up? Uh, it is, but now it's a garage. 
Okay. No, no, I, no I'm sorry. I, I've got that wrong. Yes, it, it is still there. I'm sorry. And actually, I, I do have, I know that the camera won't be able to show, but that's actually a picture of my mom holding me in front of the house. Okay. okay. And, that, and the house is still just south of the store, and it's owned by a Mr. Shelby right now. Okay. Um, so, uh, where did Calmer get its name? Well, originally it was named uh, Millersburg after Ellis Miller. Him and a guy named Nathan Williams built the first store and duplex there. But then when they went to apply for a post office, there was already a Millersburg. So they changed the name to Colomer. Okay. And Zachary Taylor was the president at the time. Okay. And maybe some people don't realize it, but the president actually had the power then to name post offices and thereby name towns. So okay. Zachary Taylor named it Colomer after Jacob Colomer. Okay. And uh, so, uh, what else was in uh, Calmer then when you were there a short time? Well, um, there was the uh, Smith's Grocery, of course, my grandparents' store. Um, there was uh, Floyd Tiger, Tenet Blacksmith Shop. Okay. Um, the, well, and this was all on the uh, north side of the river? Yeah, right? yeah, and all on State Road 14, actually. Okay. And then Roberts had, the, uh, had a wrecker and body shop there. Okay. And uh, that was all that was there when I was a kid in 1961. Was there any? And, oh, I'm sorry. And the, and the uh, park had a, big con had a conservation club where you could rent and families would rent there and you could have okay. your picnics and stuff there. And it was, it was pretty nice. Was there anything on the other, on the south side of the river uh, at the that only, time? There was never anything on the south side of the river except an old, um, old abandoned house. And actually, I remember we, we uh, once they tore it down, the farmer let us have some of the bricks out of it. Okay. Now, uh, there's an article in the uh, 1882 uh, uh, Noble, Whitley Noble County History that says that uh, there was a population of um, 150 at that one time, and, and the whole town was on the south side of the river. Is, is, is that true? No. Okay. <laughs> I, don't I was wondering I, about that. I hate yeah. to disagree, but as, as for all that I've ever seen, um, the only the only thing south of the river, there was a big there was a brick factory there where they would actually make their own brick. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I remember right, I do. I have seen one photo of it. I believe it was a, a brick kiln. Mm -hmm. And there were some. There were a few homes and farms. But there was nothing south of the river. Okay. It was all, all north of the river, and I'm sure it was just a misprint of it. Okay. And um, how many people do you suppose lived there when you were there for a while? Oh, when we were there, um, you know, I would guess maybe maybe 40 or 50. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so um, let's uh, go back. Um, into the, the early history, uh, some more of uh, Calmer. You brought us a picture here, uh, yeah. and what is this picture? This is the this is the oldest known picture that I've ever seen of the Calmer grist mill. Okay. And uh, what happened to it? Well, it uh, it was very vibrant, very important part of the community. For I think they reached, they built the very first one in 1841. Um, when Mr. Harder, who I mentioned earlier, and Mr. Willits bought it, they redid it. This is actually, I think, a picture of the day they bought it. Okay. Because it's hard to see. But if you, you can tell when picture day came, they all lined up. There's men standing in all the doorways. Okay. And two of them have vests on. I think one's Mr. Willett, one's Mr. Harder, because that was kind of common for storekeepers at that time. And there's a whole row of kids that you, when you scan this on a computer, you can see all the kids are lined up out there. So it's like a kind of a festive day. Okay. Again, the grist mill was very important. It was there about 1837, and in 1932, it came crashing down, unfortunately. Um, okay. It's it stayed in use until about 1897 as a grist mill, and then the hot Myers actually converted into a to an electrical producing plant. Okay. And it actually provided uh, electrical power to Colmer and Sydney until 1906 when RMC came along. Okay. And uh, let's talk about your family. Uh, now, uh, who, who were your grandparents? Uh, my grandparents were Charlie and Ida Smith. And what what did they do in Colmer? Uh, my grandparents actually ran the store. They bought the store in 1942. Okay. 
from a Mr. and Mrs. Saylor. Okay, and where did they come from? My grandfather was born and raised across the street from the store. Okay. I have, I have several pictures of the Smith family home. Okay. And he, like I said, he was born there in 1899. And and who were his parents? Uh, his parents was were Frank and Laura Smith. Okay. And, and where were they from? They were from Colmer. Um, my grandpa Frank was born um, on that 30 acres in 1859. Okay, that 30 acres. Um, it would be roughly it, the 30 acres south and east of Colmer. Okay. From actually the edge of Colmer, where uh, Robert's Body Shop is now, their building is now, all the way to the railroad tracks. And okay. Uh, and, and and his father okay. was John Wesley Smith, and he came to South Whitley in uh, about 1857-58, we think, and bought that 30 acres in 1859. Okay, and so that was just soon after uh, the town was uh, platted in, in 1846. Actually, it was it wasn't technically platted until 1851. Okay, I know that we know they started about 1830, but it wasn't an official town until about 1851. Okay, why do you suppose they moved to Culmer? Well, we don't know. We don't know why okay. John Wesley came. We think he may have been a, a war veteran and, uh, you know, that he had some soldiers pay. Mm -hmm. um, and also we have a, we think there was another Smith that actually across, right across the road from 14 that we think may have been a relative of his, either sister-in-law or something. And mm -hmm. We don't know if maybe they'd moved together here. Mm -hmm. Don't really know. But we know John Wesley's dad's name was Gilbert Smith. And we don't know where he came from, except that we know he was in Kentucky a long time. Mm -hmm. So, so um, you have uh, quite a history there of uh, the Smith family. And now the other side of the family, uh, your mother's side. Um, we do have we, I do have some on my mother's side, the Stevens side. Um, again, they were from Kentucky. Okay. And uh, had been in Kentucky, you know, probably 70, 80 years. Okay. Um, don't know all about, I do have a whole history of that, but, and, and my father always told me, you know, you should really study your mom's history, but I think it's just because my last name is Smith, so yes. Smith just has so much more of appeal for me to search. You know, okay, Smith. Well, that Smith is a common name, it's a little more difficult to do uh, it genealogical is, it is, research. I'm very fortunate in that my grandmother kept a lot of photos that my aunt has, has since kept, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I live 20 miles from the place my family's lived at for 100 and, 50 years now, so mm -hmm. a lot of history there. Okay. So you have a, uh, a small museum in uh, Colmer now? Yeah, uh, about um, seven years ago, eight years ago now, I had the opportunity to actually purchase my grandparents' old grocery store. Okay. Yeah, and it doesn't really look like a grocery store anymore because unfortunately in 1973, they tore the second story off. But, okay, uh, and what did they were they using it for at that? It time? was a residence. Yeah, it had been used as a residence. Okay, and uh, so um, well, all is in the museum. Uh, well, I've uh, totally redid the house and the and, and the store there to where the, at least when you walk in, it actually it looks like the sailor store. I had a, I had several photos of what the store used mm -hmm. to look like. So I put the high ceilings in. Um, I have. Most all of my old photos, a lot of them I have hung up. I have um, okay. pictures of the store from 1866 to the day my grandmother closed it in 1966. Okay. I have lots of uh, family photos. Um, when my parents owned it, um, they were a DX dealer. And of course, DX was like a rich, which what Sunoco used to be called DX. Okay. So I have a I have a, an original DX sign, just like the one that hung out front. Okay. And then I have a DX pump. Okay. And then I have a whole display case full of DX promotional items that the DX gas stations would give away. Okay. So. Now, uh, let's see, there's, uh, 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 originally there was one church in Colmers. Is that correct? Uh, well, or, in, in 1837, there might have been one church. Uh, I was looking at this county history article here, a Christian church. Yeah. At one time. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have photos yeah. of all the churches. Oh, you do? 
So, uh, so there was more than one church. Uh, yeah, there were through the years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's currently two churches. At one time, there was three or four, I believe. It. I think maybe four at one time. And what kind of what churches were they? Uh, the, were they right in Colmer? Or? Yeah, they were all um, actually. Um, two of them were originally there in Colmer, and one of them originally was actually down 900 West, sort of towards um, Liberty Mills. Okay. But about 1840s, really early on, for whatever reason, they moved the church from there. Once, I think, once the town of Colmer was established, they actually moved this church back into Colmer. Okay. Put it up on logs and mules and rolled it all the way into Colmer. Okay. And there was actually still graves in this farm field from where that church was, which is okay. kind of cool. Now, uh, there's just one church in Colmer right now. There's two churches in Colmer. Uh, okay, right, right. And right there in Colmer, is there one outside of Colmer a little ways, or both right in, close in to Colmer? Uh, they're both in the town limits. Okay. If you can say what? there's a town limit okay. in Colmer. Yeah, they're both, one's on 14 and one's on 900. Okay, and uh, what churches are they? Are they the same uh, denominations? Been there we're... for same, as far as I know, yeah, they're the exact same that's been there, I mean, at least since I was a child. So. Okay. I have pictures of our family in both of those churches. Okay. I have a, I have a merit card that my great-grandfather, Frank Smith, actually gave to one of his Bible school students at one of the churches. Okay. Um, is there any, uh, were there any special uh, characters or um, interesting people? Oh uh, yeah, Colmer, Colmer is just full of history, people will not believe it. <laughs> Besides me, <laughs> okay. and uh, uh, my father, of course, and my family, which I'm big fans of, um, there were several interesting uh, people there. Uh, uh, one in particular was um, Alfred Ross, who was uh, the third owner of the store, he was the great grand nephew of Betsy Ross. Okay. Which is kind of a neat, you know, tie to a national history, even though now we know Betsy Ross may have not actually produced the flag, it was her niece, but nevertheless she had the credit for it. So that was kind of cool having him there. Very, uh, very uh, well-known person, very, very respected. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also a Dr. Galbert there. Uh, he was an early dentist who had uh, attended uh, Indiana University. He was friends with some very influential people at the time. Um, Hoagie Carmichael was his classmate. Hoagie Carmichael actually used to play. As a uh, classmate where? At IU. Okay. IU Bloomington. Okay. And of course we can argue it depending on which, which uh, history thing you might read, but um, Dr. Galbraith supposedly in his backyard, one of him and Hart, Hoagie Carmichael's best friends was one of the very first pilots. And supposedly the first airplane to land was at Dr. Galbraith's house. Okay. And uh, Dr. Galbraith was kind of unique in that he would, uh, of course, there were very, a lot of poor people in Colmer at the time, and uh, he would actually let people trade their goods, whether it be corn or vegetables, or if you couldn't pay for your, mm -hmm. for your medicine, why he'd let you work it off and trade. And currently, the home is owned by my friend Jim Hayes. Okay. And it looks just the same as it did when Dr. Galbraith, if not, actually probably better. It's been restored to look mm -hmm. like it was. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, oh, I'm sorry. Anything else? Are uh, other people that, uh, in, in Colmer history? Yeah, one of the, of course, I, I know them quite a bit. I knew about the Rosses and the Sailors um, from my, you know, from growing up in the family and that. Um, but after I bought the store and I'd become a member of the museum, one of the ladies at the museum one day said, you know, we've got a nice story that the guy wrote in 1960, and he was 100 years old when he wrote it about Colmer. And they gave me a copy of that story, and here to find out, the, the, of course, the guy was born in Colmer. His dad was, and it was the son of John Willits, the man who bought the grist mill and actually built the store in 1866. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more I read the story, I figured out, yeah, that it was actually his store, or my store, that his father had built. Um, him and his brother, of course, grew up there in Colmer. And Mr. Uh, Hayes's house, that later would become Dr. Gower's house, mm -hmm. Mr. Willett built that in 1876. Mm -hmm. about, about five pages of the story are all about the community coming together and building this house for the Willets. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more I read about this Mr. Willets, the more interesting it was after... Why is he interesting? Well, in 18... They, they built the store in 18... They moved to Colmer in 1860s. 1866, they built the store and the dam. 
His father was a very prosperous man. In addition to the store and the grist mill, he had actually got the contract to build all the railroad ties, to make all the railroad ties for the Vandalia Railroad. Okay, now was that railroad near Colmer? Oh yeah, yeah, it went right, right through Colmer. And, but there's no railroad there now, is there? No, the last train went through in 1973. Okay. Yeah. And uh, where did this railroad go? Uh, was this the one that went through Columbia City and uh, went through uh, Busco? Went through Columbia City, Churubusco, Garrett, and uh, okay. I've studied it, but it's kind of confusing. And it went to a lot of the smaller towns that I never even knew existed. And, and actually, today they're more like burbs, kind of like Connor, Denver, and uh, just some smaller towns that I went through. Okay, further south. Uh, did the railroad play a part in the town as far as uh, exporting or uh, yeah. transportation? Well, or I, I'd say the railroad is to blame for the, for the fact that uh, Colomer never became the great town that it had. You know, you know originally Colomer was actually bigger than Springfield, which is now known as South Okay. Lake. Okay. And uh, back in the 1860s, when the railroad, uh, this Vandalia Railroad, first wanted to come through. Uh, there was a man in Liberty Mills, um, and I, don't, I apologize, I don't know his name, but he basically owned the town. I mean, he owned his stores, the grist mill, he owned everything, you know, the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had been put off because he'd lost his money on a railroad earlier, uh, sometime earlier. So when the railroad came through, they wanted to go through uh, Liberty Mills and do Collar and that, and he refused to, to, sell, them off, to sell them the land. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, the Nickel Plate Railroad, which also runs through South Whitley, goes from Chicago to, to Fort Wayne. Okay, now, two first. separate railroads. Two separate railroads. Now, are they, how far apart were they, roughly? Uh, uh, probably, uh, maybe nine-tenths of a mile apart. And uh, which one was in the n uh, north? That was the Nickel Plate. Okay, and... So it did not run through Colomer, it was just... It went, yeah, it actually okay. was about a mile, maybe a mile north of Colomer, just under a mile north of Colomer. And so anyway, the nickel plate went in, it went right through Springfield, and of course Springfield became South Whitley and became a big town. It wasn't until like 12 years later that Vendelia finally got built. And uh, unfortunately by that time, South Whitley kind of kind of taken over, so I always, I always kind of blame the railroad for the fact that Colomer died. You know, never became the big city that, uh, that's, not that South Whitley is a big town, but, and uh, so anyway, that's, it's so, very So the Vandalia, how close was it to uh, the river? Uh, it actually crossed the river at the park. Okay. Yeah, there was a trestle there that actually went over the river, and my great-grandparents, Frank and Laura Smith, used to actually take the mail bag out, you know, they used to have the hooks for the mail. Okay. And my great-grandfather, Frank, was the mailman, so they would actually go on I guess hang the bag and then take the bag okay. down. What else did he do now, your great grandfather? Uh, Frank Smith, uh, he was everything. He was he was sort of like my grandpa Charlie. They both were kind of a man's man. Of course, in that time, you had to be. Um, mm -hmm. Frank Smith was a. You had to be able to do a lot of things. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was he was the butcher. He was a butcher. He was the town constable. It was only as far as I know the only sheriff that Calmer ever had was Frank Smith. Okay. And I, don't, I suppose now they call him a town marshal, then they call him a constable. Okay. And we actually have one picture of him with his little badge and his big mustache being okay. constable. He, uh, he also raised bees, they called him the honey man. Okay, and, uh, sold the honey. Sold the honey, and actually uh, we had the, <clears throat> on the Smith property there's an old shed that sits there. And they would always call that the honey house because that's where he would sell his honey. And we cannot, <clears throat> of course we can't verify this, but I, one of my stories I like to tell is that my great grandpa Frank was the only one successful he was the only successful train robbery in Whitley County. Oh. And that they owned the ground that the railroad was built on. And of course I'm sure they probably got traded stock for it. Mm -hmm. And of course the Vandalia, because it, it wasn't until eighteen seventy three that actually finally ran. It didn't long it didn't last long and it went bankrupt. Oh. And I always like to tell people that after it went bankrupt my, my grandfather got you know, because my we think my family, well, that's where they lost a great deal of their money was in the railroad. And so we like to say that after the railroad went bankrupt, they went down and took the railroad station and moved it up to the to their house there, and it's still sitting there today. Okay. So Now, uh, you mentioned a town constable. Uh, were there ever any um, crimes or um, murders or anything in that never, area that you have heard about? Never. Uh, Never had a lot of crime. There's an old story that uh, 
There was a man once that uh, stayed out too late, and his wife went out after him with a rolling pin. And that uh, he ran and hid into the into the basement. In the basement of my store, there's an old cistern. And the story is that he ran in there and somehow got in a cistern and never seen him again. That was one of the kind of the stories the kids would tell. Okay, uh, were there taverns? And, uh, there was one. one where, there was one tavern, but it didn't stay long because once the churches came, well, I don't know, but it, I think it went out pretty quick. But when uh, when Ellis Miller and Nathan Williams built the grist mill in the store, they did have a little, I have a picture of it, it's actually, it looks sort of like, it looks like a stand you might have used to see at the baseball stadium. It was just like, had sides up about so high and a, and a roof on it. And when the guys would come in with their horse and, horse and buggies to turn in their corn, to have their corn ground, mm -hmm. you know, you might have a six or eight of them lined up and they'd be there all afternoon. So Williams and Williams and Miller thought to, uh, they'd have a big barrel of whiskey and a big barrel of beer there. Mm -hmm. And so the guys that bring, could bring their, you know, bring their grain in, could sit there and drink beer. Most of them drank beer, but the ones that had a little more money, they could drink some corn whiskey. And... Okay. How, how was a grist mill used? Uh, you know, uh, people nowadays would have no idea what it's for and... Yeah, well back then it wasn't easy to get your, uh, you know, your, either your corn ground or your wheat wheat ground, so uh, it was the very first thing that people would do when they got in the pioneer days was to build a grist mill, and the best place to do it was along the river. Because the, the, it would be run by the flow of the river, is that? That is correct, and, okay. and actually if you see a lot of, you'll see pictures of grist mill, they always have a beautiful big old wooden wheel on the outside, uh -huh. and that's very common with uh, grist mills in the northeast. Um, but around here, because of our cold winters, they figured out that it was better to have that wheel on the inside. So when you look at this picture of the grist mill, that's why you don't see the wheel, because the wheel is actually on the inside. Okay. And what they would do is, is right on this, the one side of the dam, they had a, have a channel. Mm -hmm. And they had a valve there, and, you, and the wheel was actually still there. You'd crank this up, and it let the water come through, and the water would, would go inside the building, fill the paddle wheel, and the paddle wheel would turn and... and or grind to corn. So. Okay, so if farmers would bring their uh, um, grains in, like wheat, wheat and corn, corn, and have it ground. Mm -hmm. If you were not a farmer, you would just buy extra grain. Uh, you could go there and buy your grain, and also the one thing I did mention too, um, about 20 years after it was first built, they added this, it was actually a sawmill too. Okay. Because there was a lot of power there with that river, and so you, they would actually, okay. they had uh, two different grist mills, and then they had a sawmill. And the very first saw was one that would kind of go up and drop down and drag back, and it would go up, drop down, and drag back. And then I actually okay. have a story telling about when they got the first circular one, so. So the area there was uh, really wooded uh, originally. Oh, yeah. Uh, just yeah. mostly woods. Yeah, and, and, and getting back to Mr. Willett, one of the interesting things was, again, his father had the contract to build those railroad ties. Well, he died in 1876, and a man named S.J. Peabody took over that contract. And, of course, we know now that S.J. Peabody, you know, came to Columbia City and kind of helped build our former library, and it's still the namesake of this library, which yes. is kind of another interesting fact. And I have a nice, the museum has a nice picture of Mr. Peabody sitting in the old river in the place we call the Ford. Okay which is kind of interesting. So, so uh, let's say there was the sawmill, the grist mill. Uh, was there a drugstore of any kind ever? Uh, yeah, there was a drugstore there. Um, uh, there was a total of uh, four stores in Colmer. Okay. And up until about 1960, there was three. And uh, right across 14 from my store, there was a store there called the Fleck Brothers store. And it was a very well-known store and right beside Right attached to their store was a little drug store, okay. and it was called Schnepps. And the Schnepps actually still live in South Wales, very nice people. And this would, would have been their great grandfather. He owned Schnepps Drug Store. Okay. And any other um, places in Colorado? Oh, there's, there's a lot of them. They had. Uh, there was actually my great grandfather John Wesley. He was a butcher, so they had a what they called Smith Slaughterhouse. Both my grandfather, great grandfather, slaughtered for you know years and years. Um, there was a cooper shop where a guy did nothing but work on copper and silver. Um, they had a basket maker, a guy that would do nothing but make baskets. He would make fish baskets for a lot of the 
a lot of the stores here in Columbia City, he would make the baskets. And um, let's see, what, oh, they, there was a cabinet company or a furniture store there. They made chairs. Um, so there was, there was a lot of, and I don't, it's hard to keep track of all of it in my mind, but yeah, there was actually quite a bit to do, quite a, quite a few industries there in Calmer back okay. in the 1870s. It is kind of remarkable uh, that um, things kind of disappeared in Calmer and South Whitley went on and on. Um, it's a darn railroad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, um, so people, uh, there was probably a pretty close connection with South Willie and uh, to... Uh, well, it, my uh, my aunt tells me when I when she was young in the 40s, South Willie and Calmer, of course Calmer had its own school, they had a total of two schools. And I'm fortunate I have beautiful pictures of both schools. Okay, and roughly when was, when did they have uh, these schools? Well, the very first... I don't want to keep us here all day, John, but the very first school was actually in, in, in Mr. Harder's house, which is still there on 14. I have photos of it. But the, the first official school they built is where Robert's Body Shop is today. And I okay. want to guess it was probably built probably around 1860. And then in 1878 or so, they built a new two-story school right across the street from that. Wood, probably wood. All, all, all brick and concrete. All brick, okay. And uh, unfortunately, they built it really close to a stream, and every spring it would flood. Okay. And so, and again, as Colomer kind of began to diminish and the population would, you know, kind of dwindle, well, then eventually they, they did ship those kids to South Whitley then. Um, and actually, Seibert's Body Shop which is, you know, now looks just like a garage. It's still standing today. Those blocks came out of the foundation of, this, of the Colomer School. Okay. And the little bell that sit on the school is out in front of their house now down there. Okay. Now, um, there's a uh, really nice large house on the west side of uh, Colomer on the south side of the road. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? Who lives there? Who used to live there? Well, originally that was built um, by a man by the name of John Goff, and he would have been my great, great, great grandfather. Okay. And uh, he came here in 1850 uh, from Ohio, originally from Pennsylvania, moved to Ohio, and then in 1850 mm -hmm. uh, moved, moved into that, built that, had that house built. We think he had it built. He was a pretty prominent person. And, um, he came here and he, you know, I had my one grandparent, my grandfather had 30 acres on that side of Calmer. Mm -hmm. John Goff was John Wesley Smith's father-in-law. Mm -hmm. So uh, my great-great-grandmother's name was Rahima Goff, and that was her father. She was 13 when they came here and built that house. Okay, and um, it uh, looks very much now like it did then, do you it, think? Uh, we, I have, the oldest picture I have of it is from about 1918. Okay. And it looks better than it did in 1918, okay. but we think it looks pretty close to what it would have originally, except for it probably originally had a t very tall porch on the front, and now okay. it just has a, you know, a concrete in front of it, but it's still very beautiful. Okay, now, uh, Colomer is a very charming place now. Um, there's a farm right there close to town, and uh, that's kind of an old uh, uh, Farm there. It's been there a long time. The house and the uh, this that would be on the uh, east side, um, the north side of the uh, road. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and uh, when, I'm struggling for the. I apologize for the for the name. I'm trying to think of the names of the of the farm right there. Um, uh, and uh, a historic farm. Uh, it's probably not in the same. Um, actually, family. it's it's not as old as people think. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Mr. Willett had, had built the home there that uh, Jim Hayes owns in 1876, and then Dr. Galbert owned it. And we know, that, like I say, from the story, sometime in the 20s, that uh, one of his friends from IU flew the first airplane, the first airplane there. Um, but anyway, I have a picture of the Calmer Christian Church, right where and. Uh, I apologize, I feel so bad, I can't think of the family name there because they're very nice people and they own a lot of other ground here. But they've owned the farm for a long time, but I've got a picture of this church we think is about 1880-ish, and there's an out, and that big beautiful barn is not there. 
Oh, okay. So we think it was built sometime around, you know, after 1880. Quite possibly after John Willett died in 1876, that might have been when, when uh, they bought that and built that big farm. But big, beautiful barn on the last year in Whitley County. Okay. So why did your father move out uh, and when, when, you, when your father and mother moved, uh, were there other relatives still there? Yeah, my, uh, the home place was owned by my great uncle, which was Kenneth Smith, Kenneth and Dorothy Smith. They still owned the house that um, actually, in, eight, in the, you see, Frank Smith was born in 1859. His grandfather, which was John Goff, he died in 1876 also, the same year as Mr. Willett. And that's when he, we think that, you know, they, we know from the will that my great great grand, my well, third great grandmother got a, a fourth of that farm. And that's when Frank Smith actually bought Mr. Miller's store and built the family home place. And my uncle, my great uncle Kenneth and Aunt Dorothy lived there until 1992. And and now, now uh, is there are there any of your family still? No. In the area? Um, um, after Uncle Kenneth passed away, Aunt Dorothy had sold the place to uh, Wayne Roberts, mm -hmm. and uh, the house was in very bad shape. I mean. Uh, Frank Smith made, was, was a very talented man, but it was an older house, it wasn't built well, and, and so the Roberts ended up tearing the house down. But the railroad station slash honey house is still there. Okay, yeah. well, uh, I'll have to go down and see all these places. You come down and, yeah. yeah. So how did you uh, get interested in history? I, you are on the um, board of the Welly County Historical Society now. Yeah, I, I've always loved history as a kid. My grandmother, uh, who lived at the store, my grandma Ida Smith, was very much an historian. She had, you know, we had family photos from the 1860s. Okay. Did uh, she write anything? About she didn't write enough. No, she didn't. Okay. She didn't really. She uh, spent her life, though, keeping track of photos and mm -hmm. names, names on the photos was always important. And one of the, one of our fun things to do, of course, when we went to grandma's was we could play in the store. You know, we were never allowed to touch the groceries or anything like that, but we'd always get to play with the, the weight, you know, the scale thing that would scale, and, and we would play with the old paper wrapper and things like that. But the one thing we always liked to, Grandma always had us do, at least every time we went there, if not every other time, she'd always get the family photo albums out and say, now look here, now this is so and so, you know, so she was very much the historian. And I really didn't get into it much until I was probably, you know, in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's that point, you get to that point where you think, you know, where did I come from or what, what was my, you know, and you really start to think about it. Okay. And then, of course, I bought the, I bought, well, after I bought the store and I, I found this Willett story, I bought some buttons uh, from, a, from e, on eBay from a lady in Kendallville from the, ever from the Calmer store. And she was the one that said, well, I have this scrapbook I found in 1966. Would you like to, I'd like to, I could bring along and show it to you. And she brought that scrapbook, and that's where I've got I got the picture. I got the uh, the Bible school card from my great grandfather, and these two beautiful 1866 photos. So, what was uh, life like back for your grandfather and your great grandfather? Uh, it was quiet down there. Um, what uh, what did they do for? Um, Entertainment. Uh, well, um, life was hard, you know. From what okay. I mean, they, you know, my great grandfather, John Wesley Smith. Of course, we know he had some kind of money because he bought the thirty acres there and, and built a, a yes. modest home. Yes. But he was a he was a, like I say he was a butcher, and as far as we know, you know, worked pretty. So hard. they so they worked a lot of the they time. And, and Frank Smith again, he he made honey. They raised vegetables. Um, and I know, like when my grandfather, of course, he was born in 1899, but um, he was a, in addition to being a storekeeper, he worked at all the stores there. He worked at Fleck Brothers, he worked at Stoner's, and then he worked at Ross's. Of course, there were three stores there when he was a kid. What did they do for fun? Well, for fun, they would go down the river. I mean, you had a, the river was clean then, you know. And was, what would they do there? Oh, they would, yeah, you could go fishing, you could go boating, okay. you know. Uh, uh, you could swim. Suppose. You could go swimming, yeah, uh, kind of ice skating, you know, they used to always, mm -hmm. even when I was a kid, when the park was still there, and by the way, the park was on the side of the grist mill. Okay. And the reason it was called Baker's Park is, it's a long story, but I'll try and tell it short. Ellis Miller, the original owner, um, 
he died, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but a lot of these characters all kind of died about that 1870-ish range, but um, Ellis Miller had a son, one son, so that the one son owned most of the interest in the, in the mill property along with Mr. Harder, and uh, he married a lady named Baker, and then he ran off. And uh, we were talking about Mr. Willett earlier, the interesting thing about Mr. Willett is after his father died, him and his brother came to Columbia City, built about three or four stores, and then during the Oklahoma land rush, Mr. Willett and his brother actually went to Oklahoma and were part of the Oklahoma land rush. Ask, may I ask you a question about this? Yeah. Who was his brother, his first name? Was it Eugene? Or? His, his brother's name um, in the story is not Eugene. It, no, I think Eugene is actually his brother's son, maybe. Because um, the, there's this historic uh, Hooper House here on Chauncey Street in mm -hmm. Columbia City, which has just recently been restored, owned by uh, Adams Y. Hooper. Uh, his daughter married uh, an Adams, and I believe their daughter married Eugene Willett. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think there's a connection there? Yeah, I think. Uh, okay. Jacob, uh, I mean, Ed, Ed and Jacob were the two boys' names. Jacob's the one that wrote this 40, nice 40 page story. Okay. Which I'm, I'm hoping to change it to put into a book form with nice photos. Good. And his brother came to Columbia City. They, he built like seven houses. They built three or four different, had three or four different stores. And uh, sadly, uh, actually, Jacob went to Oklahoma. And I, to get back to the park story real quick, mm -hmm. when he, we think when he went to Oklahoma, this Mr. Miller's son went with him and, and unfortunately left poor Mrs. Baker. And that's how we think the name became Baker's Park. Okay. Um, but anyway, Jacob Willits had went to Oklahoma and actually wrote a story about that. And sometime later, a, a lady had read his story that he wrote. And it wasn't much. It was just a, I don't know, an eight or nine page story. And anyway, she made a play out of that story. She named the play Cimarron in that movie. And okay. eventually, people in Hollywood found that story. So if you ever see the movie Cimarron, that movie actually originated from uh, this Jacob Wilkes. Very interesting. And um, sadly, though, they continued. He came back to Columbia City. He was married to a Linville, very prominent family here in Whitley County. Unfortunately, uh, sadly, his wife died, remarried. But then in 1922, uh, him and his brother had bought some homes in Erst, excuse me, some stores in Chicago. And this was during the Roaring Twenties, and unfortunately, the very violent Twenties. And anyway, uh, his brother Reese, or Ed Willits, was actually killed in Chicago in 1922 during a store robbery. Okay. And I believe Eugene Willits was Reese Willits' son. Okay. Now, Calmer's uh, kind of stuck off on the edge of Whitley County. Mm -hmm. Did um, people there maybe not feel as much a part of, uh, of the of an identity with Whitley County because of that? Or, well, you know, did Columbia City seem a long ways away? And uh, yeah, um, well, it, of course, originally when you when you the land patents there, you either bought you either bought the land in Kosciuszko or Fort Wayne because Whitley County wasn't formed yet until I think Whitley County was formed in 1836 or 38. So the very first uh, deeds and abstracts that I have from Colmer, it was actually just called the Northwest Territory. There was no Whitley County yet, but. Okay. I know in the in the 30s and 40s, uh, even though the kids, had, uh, number one, they didn't like it when they had to change the name in the 1860s from Millersburg to Colmer, because they liked the name Millersburg, and that's what they'd always called it. And I have a picture of their railroad station. They changed that if it was 1865. It wasn't until like, it wasn't until the railroad station came in they changed the name. And I actually have a picture of the railroad station that still said Millersburg, but. In the 1930s then, even though they had already started going to school in South Whitley, the Calmer kids and the South Whitley kids actually kind of feuded. It was actually kind of a territorial thing. Kind of a rivalry there. And yeah, so if like the Calmer kids wanted to go to play at the South Whitley Park while the, you know, the high schoolers in there would kind of get off. Okay. You know, and you were talking about, that. I don't know of any crimes, but there are some very sad stories of Calmer that happened in Calmer. And one of them was in the 1940s. And uh, Ed Arnold, one of the Arnold brothers that owned the gas station in South Whitley, had, had told me that, um, and I take that back, uh, this, was this was South Whitley, Columbia City, that had the territorial problems. Oh, okay. I, I guess one summer there were a bunch of Columbia City students that had came down to Colmer 
down to the park there because the dam was a beautiful another thing to do there was was the dam just to look at the dam is beautiful and when you were a kid the fun thing was you would dare each other to walk across the dam where just before it was the water was falling over no no walk across while the water was flowing okay when i was a kid okay, that was yeah. a it was a big dare thing to walk now i would never let my kids do that because i mean you could get hurt really bad but we did it all the time but so these Columbia City kids that came down and wanted to go hang out at the park and, and there was a big sand light, sand landing there where you could play on the mill race. And anyway, so the, the Columbia and South Whitley kids didn't want them here. So the Columbia kids evidently, you know, got after him and, and Eddie Arnold and his brothers and some of his friends would actually went after this, these few kids. And uh, sadly, there's, I guess there was a few boys from Columbia City and the rest were all girls. And the South Whitley and Columbia kids got these, chased these Columbia City kids into their car. They took off, and unfortunately, they didn't stop to, at 14 there, and, and their car was hit, and a little girl was killed. So, okay. one of the sad stories of Columbia. Okay. Another sad thing was, in, uh, back in the 30s, my, uh, my great uncle Lawrence and his friend, which is also a cousin of mine, uh, Alex Goff, we used, they used to ice skate on the river in the wintertime. And uh, Alex, this Alex Goff actually had fallen through the ice and, and drowned there while ice skating, which was a very sad oh. thing. Now, the dam's not always been there. Why is there a dam there? The dam was originally built in 1837, and of course it was built there strictly for the purpose of power and Okay, Christmas. I see. And I see. Uh, very interesting, uh, Mr. Willett also tells the story of the, the dam did, did bust in uh, I think 1868 during a flood and I actually have pictures of the flood. Okay and uh, uh, did it uh, flood the town or flood further down? It, it just uh, of course it disabled the, the, the grist mill couldn't work without the dam so just and then also when it went out it took the bridge out that was there at the time and he tells the story about all the men in town rushing down with their horse their horses and rigs and, and, and trying to save the timbers and stuff because to the, to to the timbers that made up the dam? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, yeah. and so they did. And the bridge, of course. And and so they did. And they did save the, everything. Yeah, they saved the bridge, the dam was rebuilt. And uh, okay. uh, I hate to keep going back in time. The great thing about history, you can well, it's very backwards interesting. and backwards, but um, yeah. this Mr., um, and I want to make sure I've got this right, I, I, but I'm pretty sure it is. Mr. Harder, that was the original partner of Mr. Willits in the mm -hmm. store, mm -hmm. his his father and brothers built that built the original dam, and I think when he built that dam for Mr. Miller, that's when instead of taking pay, his his father just got out of the Civil War, so he took all of his sons and they went around all these towns and they were actually would have been a Spanish American War. Take that back, but they'd go to these towns and they would build these dams for people and instead of taking money they would exchange it for the land. I see. And that's how Mr. That's how Mr. Harder got his farm, we think, and how he got I the see. interest in the store. And there's also, they built the dams in Laketon, Elkhart, and a few other towns. And I actually, I, I actually had a store token from a Harder store in, in, El, in uh, Goshen. So that's how I know they built the dam in okay. Goshen also. Was there much transportation on the river? Yes. I mean, it was a... Uh, I like from Columbia City to Colomer and then further down to uh, North Manchester. People went by boat? People did go by boat. There was there was always a road there, too. Um, okay. Since the first time, even since when the Indians were there, there was there was a path along the river that they would use. Uh, maybe along the south side or the north side? Actually, or? that was along the south side, so maybe okay. the Indians had a town. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and when the railroads were there, uh, could people uh, get on at Colmer and uh, say go to uh, Wabash or somewhere? You could uh, go, yeah. Uh, I think the Mandalia was about 70 or 80 miles long. And yeah, you could, for a very short time when the Mandalia started and they had the railroad station, which was built on my, my family's land. Okay. Yeah, you could go down to the railroad station and you could, you could ship your wares there. You could okay. get on. But again, they took so long. To get the railroad going, okay. Three years later, it was it, it, it actually went bankrupt. I think they sold it out to the Wabash Railroad and then several yes. several other railroad companies. But once the Vandalia was gone, nobody else used the station. Okay. Because South Whitley was you know two miles to town. 
Now, how about cars? Uh, do you remember, say, uh, your grandfather's first car, or your father's uh, first car? Or? Well, our first, the first car I remember was, of course, I was born in 61, so okay. our first car was, in, in, and there was five of us kids, so. Okay. <laughs> And my dad, with my family, I guess, has always been a, a Ford person, so uh, we always we always had station wagons. And the first one I remember was a 1963 Ford station wagon. Now, this was your car or your father's? That was my father's car. Okay. And uh, Now, where did he get that car? Uh, from the Ford dealer. Uh, <laughs> and actually, I don't know where he got that one, uh -huh. but I do know that our second car was a six, the one I, you know, I was only four years old, so I don't know how I remember this, but I do. We had a 1965 Fairline station wagon. The dad loved it because it had a big 394 barrel in it. Yeah. And we bought that at Allen County Motors. Okay, in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. And then in 69, we bought our Ford truck from Buchanan Ford. Okay, now how about your um, grandfather? My, my grandfather uh, drove a Dodge. And where do you suppose he got that? I don't know. Okay. I really don't know, but I've got a lot of, you know, it's amazing. Uh, South Whitney used to have a lot of dealerships. And I would, oh. I would guess my grandfather built it, bought it at one of the dealers there in, All right. in the South River. Um, there's right. a Fisher Chevrolet and uh, you know several other, there's a Dodge dealer. And, All right. Okay, now, have, uh, have we established when uh, kids in Colmer, uh, they uh, started going to South Willie? For school? Uh, I, have, uh, I have actually a graduation picture that uh, a lady, uh, name of Joanne Combs, who sadly recently passed away, but she had a picture of the inside of that school, and, and it was the year before they shut it down. We think it was about 1926, 27. The last time there was a school. Yeah. And since then, they've all gone to South uh, South, South mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, has, uh, uh, I suppose it was a good life for your family in a lot of ways, your your grandfather and your father. Uh, oh, well, by the way, why did uh, he, uh, he leave uh, Calm or your father uh, a different job? You know? Well, he worked, you know, of course, uh, all my grandfathers were kind of, you know, they were kind of self-supporting. They did, you know, they, they okay. were butchers. They, my grandfather, Charlie, he ran the store. He was a butcher. He was a hunter. Okay. He was a taxidermist. You know he could do anything, and 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 my dad uh, was a, just he was a great guy, but he's the kind of guy that if you saw an animal getting cut up, he just he was not that kind of guy. Okay. He worked at International Harvester, and I think at the time, I, I think at the time it was just there wasn't anything available in Colmer. Okay, and so you lived in uh, Tunker. Lived in Tunker for, for three years. Three years. Four years. Maybe. And then Thorn Creek Township. Thorn Creek Township. Okay. Was living. I lived at Thorn Creek on McConnell Road, and that was probably that was probably the fun time of our life. It's probably when we were you know young kids all growing up had a nice little farmhouse out Thorn Creek Township. Okay. wasn't a lot to do, but we always found something to do, and usually it was going in the woods or in the creek or something like that. Okay. And there was a few lakes there, Loon Lake, oh, yeah, close Lake. by. We rode our bikes to Loon Lake, Big Lake, all the time. Goose okay. Lake. Now there was a Johnson family uh, lived on McConnell Road. Yes. Right. Yes, he or Mr. Johnson. Uh, old, long-time family. Oh, really? Um, He's a very interesting man. Um, very nice man. He owned the woods across the street. Okay. And, and I didn't know it at the time, and maybe I've got I got that from my grandfather. But I always loved the woods. I mean, I was mm -hmm. seven years old. I had my Red Rider BB gun and my Beagle dog. I wanted to be in the woods. Mm -hmm. We had known the woods, but Mr. Johnson was always, yeah, you know, he'd let me go back there all as long as I stayed away from the cider press, because he always, he made, he made apple cider there. Yeah. And I, I believe there was an Isaiah Johnson, and that's Johnson with a T, I believe, mm -hmm. who at one time uh, at Old Settlers uh, received the award for the, being the oldest person, and I think maybe another year for um, having lived in Whitley County the longest. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and, um, I am uh, uh, related to them, and I, you know. I would love to, you know, that's that's the sad thing when you're younger like that, you don't think to talk to those yes. people as much as you would have, but he, yes. and he always had time to talk to us, and he would tell us some stories and stuff, but yeah, his family, I was, I think he might have been born on that same property. I'm sure he, that, I think Mr. Johnston I knew, I, I, I lived there his entire life, made apple yes. cider his entire life, and man, if I could go back now, and sit down with a pen and paper and talk to that guy. 
-hmm. And uh, I've been all over Whitley County, I've lived here all my life mostly, did all kinds of hunting. It's the only place I've ever actually found pawpaw trees that was just full of pawpaw trees. Okay. Just a little side note. There. Now pawpaws, you could actually eat the fruit from uh, pawpaw? Okay. Yeah, they call them Indiana bananas. Indiana bananas, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, is there anything else you would like to uh, to add to this? Uh, uh, I, I have about 18 hours worth, but uh, <laughs> you know, I know our time is short here, but... Um, do you have any um, observations about uh, Willie County history in general? Uh, well, again, being it's, it's because I've been a member of the museum there for 12 hours on the, or 12 years on the board of, on the board of directors. Um, there's so much more that we could be doing here in Whitley County. Okay. So many, so many buildings have come and gone. And yes. if, if one thing that the people of Whitley County or the library could work on is getting people's old photos before okay. they end up in somebody's trash can because... And also getting them labeled. Getting them labeled, yeah. yes. Having the label is very important. Okay. To know where they're at. Um, so, well, uh, thank you very much for, uh, thank you for having sharing me. your uh, knowledge of Colmer and your family history for the benefit of the future generations. It was my pleasure. Thank you. I, know. I want to get a scan. I want to sell make like decals and stickers people can buy. Or... And this is from an actual This is an actual feed sack, sack that my grandfather had. That's marvelous. And in the story, Mr. Willett tells how they used to send us corn to New York during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, when they, after, on the way back, they evidently bought the feed sacks. Did you get this? Mm -hmm. They bought the feed sacks in New York because they're made out of recycled New York newspapers. <laughs> so I thought that was Oh, cool. how neat. This is a picture of the store, we think, during the time that Alfred Ross That's my grandfather and his three brothers. Door. And the coolest, there's a couple of really neat things about this. I'll hold it until you say pause. Okay. Cool thing about this is I don't, can't ever prove it, but I think this is my great great grandfather, John Willits, and my great grandfather, Frank Smith. And everybody showed up for picture day, but nobody thought to get the pier and out of a second story window. <laughs> they used to rent this out to borders and a few. This is the store when the, well, this is, yeah, when the sailors owned the grocery store. And the thing about this is Mr. Sailor was missing one arm, so if you notice, he had his left hand behind something. He was very subconscious about the arm he was missing. And these old, these old cooler, I have a video, my father took a video the day we shut the store down in 1966. And my grandparents still had the same uh, meat lockers there, the old wooden meat lockers. Wow. We used to play in those all the time, it was a lot of fun. Oh, I like you. 48 when my grandparents owned it. That was a DX station. And I've got that exact DX sign hanging up inside now. The family residence. Uh, Frank Smith, the man in the middle, was the town marshal, and he was also the butcher and the, and the blacksmith and the honey man. And my grandfather, Charlie, is, is sitting on his grandmother's lap there. This is a picture of the first duplex in Whitley County that Ellis Miller and Nathan Williams built around 1838 and was there until 1942 when the Browners tore it down. And this is to, said to be the last graduating class of the Colmer School and this was compliments of the late Nancy Combs.